sophisticated and dynamic styling. The full power of the high performance engine is transmitted to the road through the full time four wheel drive and suspension. A sporty and compact urban four wheel drive that offers both on road and off road driving performance. The Toyota RAV4. In this video, we will first give an overview of the Toyota RAV4. And then we'll cover the new mechanisms and service points of this vehicle item by item. First, the styling. The rounded, compact shape achieves the lowest drag coefficient level of its class at 0.39. The size of the tires is 215.70 R16. The RAV4 comes with lightweight twin sunroofs made of aluminum. A swing type back door is used. A monocoque body construction is used to reduce the vehicle weight. The body is made more rigid by strengthening its members. And using front and rear subframes. The instrument panel design is sporty. A mechanical type supplemental restraint system airbag is available for the driver. The engine is a 2 liter 3S FE engine. It is similar to the 3SFE engine used on the Carina E and Corona and the 5SFE engine used on the Celica. Two types of TCCS fuel injection systems are used, a two-group type and an all-cylinder simultaneous injection type. Three-channel control type ABS provides independent control to the front wheels while simultaneously controlling the rear wheels. The deceleration sensor is installed in the center console. This sensor is identical to the one used on the Celica. The deceleration sensor consists of two semiconductor sensors, which linearly detect the vehicle's longitudinal and lateral acceleration rates. Accordingly, the ABS response has also been improved. The two types of transaxle shown here have been developed to make full-time four-wheel drive available for the RAV4. The center differential of the manual transaxle. It uses a manually operated mechanical differential lock system. The automatic transaxle uses an electronically controlled hydraulic multi-plate clutch to control and limit the center differential effect. The rear limited slip differential is a torque sensing type. It is the same type as that used on the Supra and Celica. It is designed to improve the vehicle's driving performance on low friction road surfaces.
The front suspension is a McPherson strut type with L-shaped lower arm. The rear suspension uses the newly developed double wishbone type with trailing arm. This increases the stroke of the rear suspension. and provides a more spacious cabin. The E250F manual transaxle on the RAV4 is basically the same in construction and operation as the one used on the Corolla and Camry four-wheel drive models. This transaxle consists of a center differential, a front differential, and a transfer. Now, let's look at the power flow. The power from the transmission is first transmitted to the center differential. Here, the power is distributed to the front and rear. Power to the rear is transmitted through the transfer to the rear differential while the power to the front is transmitted through the front differential to the front wheels. When the center differential lock switch is turned on, this locking sleeve slides into lock position to directly connect the front and rear axles. However, even after the differential lock switch has been turned off, the locking sleeve occasionally will not move to its free position. When this happens, the center differential lock warning buzzer sounds to alert the driver. This is the switch for the center differential lock warning buzzer. It detects whether the locking sleeve is in the lock or free position. Normally, when the center differential lock switch is off, the warning buzzer switch is also turned off. However, if the warning buzzer switch remains on, it indicates that the sleeve is still in the lock position and the warning buzzer will sound. When this happens, keep the vehicle in a straight line. If the vehicle is in motion, accelerate or decelerate the vehicle. And if the vehicle is stopped, drive backward so that the sleeve will return to its free position and stop the buzzer. The A540H automatic transaxle adds a center differential and transfer to the A540E. This transaxle consists of an automatic transmission and a front differential. To which a center differential, a transfer, and a center differential control mechanism have been added. Let's see how the power is transmitted. The power from the transmission is first transmitted to the ring gear, and then to the center differential. Here, the power is distributed to the front and rear. The power to the rear is transmitted through the right side gear and through the transfer to the rear differential. The power to the front is transmitted through the left side gear through the front differential and to the front wheels. 
The center differential clutch, which controls the differential effect, is located here. The clutch consists of clutch discs, clutch plates, and hydraulically operated clutch pistons. They control the differential effect of the center differential pinion gear and left side gear in accordance with the hydraulic pressure applied. Thus controlling the differential effects of the front and rear axles. The ECU performs this control continuously during driving. Now let's look at the components of this system and their functions. The center differential control system consists of the following components. Here's the engine and transaxle ECU. This is the front speed sensor that detects the vehicle's speed according to the ring gear revolutions. This is the rear speed sensor that detects the speed of the rear wheels according to the transfer drive gear revolutions. The ECU calculates the vehicle speed and any difference in the revolution rates of the front and rear wheels through these two speed sensors. Also, the ECU receives the throttle opening angle signal from the throttle position sensor. There are two actuators. One is a solenoid valve, ST, located within the transaxle valve body. This increases the line pressure. And the other actuator is a linear solenoid valve, SLD, located within the transfer valve body. It controls the center differential clutch control pressure and operates under control of the ECU's duty cycle. The hydraulic circuit consists of a manual valve to switch the hydraulic passage, a primary regulator valve to control the line pressure, a solenoid modulator valve to maintain a constant hydraulic pressure, and a center differential clutch control valve which controls the hydraulic pressure applied to the center differential clutch. Now, let's look at how the center differential control works in various driving conditions. And during normal driving, a small center differential clutch control pressure is applied to the center differential clutch in accordance with the throttle opening angle. This means that a small differential limiting effort is occurring. When the vehicle makes a turn at low speeds, it creates a large difference between the revolutions of the front and rear axles, which prompts the ECU to open the solenoid valve SLD wide to lower the center differential clutch control pressure in order to reduce the differential limiting effort, thus allowing differential effort and providing smooth cornering performance. Conversely, when a large difference between the revolutions of the front and rear axles is created at low speed, such as when a wheel slips, the solenoid valve SLD closes fully to apply the maximum center differential clutch control pressure. In addition, if the vehicle is being driven forward, the ECU turns on the solenoid valve ST. to increase the line pressure itself in order to create the maximum differential limiting effect and improve driving performance. Furthermore, if the throttle is opened wide during a takeoff, the ECU will prevent the vehicle from slipping by controlling solenoid valve SLD to slightly increase the differential limiting effect.
The A540H automatic transaxle thus provides the differential limiting effect in accordance with driving conditions. Let's take a look at the service points. This A540H automatic transaxle uses two types of oil, automatic transmission fluid type T for the transaxle and API GL5 hypoid gear oil for the transfer. To inspect the operation of solenoid valve ST, remove the test plug from the side of the transaxle case and attach an oil pressure gauge. First, check the line pressure at idle with the shift lever in the D position. Then detach the connector and connect a subharness to the terminals of solenoid valve ST. Apply battery voltage to solenoid valve ST, which causes the valve to open. And check that the line pressure has increased. In order to inspect the operation of solenoid valve SLD, remove the test plug located on top of the transaxle case and attach an oil pressure gauge. Start the engine and verify that the hydraulic pressure at idle is under one kilogram per square centimeter. Then press the accelerator pedal halfway or more to drive the vehicle forward and verify that the hydraulic pressure increases to more than three kilograms per square centimeter during the takeoff. And that the pressure returns to the idle level when the accelerator pedal is released. To check the operation of solenoid valve SLD by applying current directly to it, Attach to the SLD connector a sub-harness that has been prepared for testing purposes. Apply battery voltage and check that the hydraulic pressure increases to the line pressure. On this automatic transaxle, there is no provision for locking the center differential. Therefore, several precautions must be taken when testing this vehicle on a chassis dynamometer. For details of these precautions, please refer to the repair manual. A double wishbone with trailing arm type suspension is used for the rear. This suspension system consists of an upper arm, a lower arm, and a trailing arm which is integrated with the rear axle carrier. Let's look at this diagram describing the movements of this suspension. Here we can see that the three arms form a double wishbone movement. This suspension system incorporates the advantages of a double wishbone construction and successfully increases the suspension stroke, making it possible to fine-tune the wheel alignment to an ideal arrangement. The wheel camber can be adjusted by the adjusting cam. and tow in by this adjusting cam. Behind its sophisticated and sporty demeanor lies a world of adventure. In this video, we have discussed the new mechanisms and service points of the RAV4. For further details, please consult the new car features, repair manuals, and electric wiring diagrams.